Roger Morrow is here. We got Chris Broussard, uh, the odd couple with Rod Parker. Uh, that's seven to ten on um on iHeart. And then I you have another radio show. App, uh Sirius XM eighty three and Fox Sports Radio. Mm. Okay, we're not mad. Which is what's the Sirius XM? Uh, because that's 83, where I hear you. Channel eighty three. Channel eighty three, seven to ten. Um, <laughs> y'all are, I, you know, it, it's wild watching where we are right now, it, and especially with the backdrop politically. Do you know You're what I'm right. saying? Uh, right. You know, sports and our politics tend to run. You know, I don't know where we are right now, though. I'm completely confused by the state of our union, and mm. I don't have answers. <laughs> Chris Broussard, do you have any answers <laughs> for where we are and what's Ooh. happening? I mean, that's such a loaded question. Um, it is. Are we talking about the <laughs> black community? Are we talking about America as a yes. whole? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I'll give you I'll a, say, I'll I'll give say, you a um, well, specific ahead. example. What do you think about like the reaction to like Harrison Butker's speech, which was a religious speech at a religious institution, right. versus and the and the kind of the support kind of or at least tacit support that he's getting from the league and and fellow players compared to like say Kaepernick just a few years ago, where it was like you. Hey, this is a big distraction. You got you got to get out of here for that. And I see people making that comparison a lot. What do you think of yeah. it? I don't think those are comparable. First of all, Kaepernick was great. I I, I say this. Um, Colin Kaepernick, I, I thought what he did, Every I think all of us, is certainly in the Black community, believe what he did was brave. And it was, but it was even more courageous than we give it credit for. Because if a superstar does that, if Kaepernick had done that, a couple years earlier when he was like one of the best quarterbacks in the league, it wouldn't have been an issue. Right. But when you, he was now a second string coming off the bench. Now you, he really put his career in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I think we have to understand that. Look, if LeBron James did what Kaepernick did, if Patrick Mahomes did what Kaepernick did, you think they would be out of the league? No, no. your, your production has to exceed the level of quote unquote distraction that you bring. Oof. And if it does, like if, if LeBron or uh, Mahomes did something like that, it heck, it may have become a big trend. And even with Kaepernick, obviously he was out of the league, but still a lot of players started kneeling and, and even teams and stuff like that. But look, Marshawn Lynch was sitting for during that whole time. And yeah. because he was still a highly productive player, it wasn't a big deal. So I think these are two different. But as far as Butker, look, I said this, we debated on our radio show. If 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 he can't go to a Catholic university and give a speech that is wholly in line with Catholic beliefs and principles for 2000 Wait, years, pause, pause. It, is no, it? Is yeah, it, it is. in alignment? I grew up Catholic. I was raised Catholic. So this, do you believe this? Uh, well, what are you, you referring to? The the whole thing that you know, all of these young ladies that are getting degrees, right? This is not all male school, right? Should be homemakers. He didn't say and, that. And the he 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 never deterred women from going out in the workplace. Mm -hmm. In fact, he said many of you I, will go on to do great things. Mm -hmm. I think what he was saying was, if you are a homemaker, it shouldn't be devalued. He was, I think he was praising that, that, quote uh, unquote, uh, Chris. no, let me finish. <laughs> and then you, let me finish, please. It's your show. But I think he was saying that if women who are homemakers should not be belittled or looked down upon, and if you're a woman who wants to be a homemaker, you shouldn't feel less than a woman who is out there being a doctor. Look, my wife's a medical doctor. My one of my daughters is getting a PhD in psychology. Another one works at BT. So I'm all for women having sorry, great careers the last and all that. Sorry. But I'm just saying, the a homemaker should not be devalued. Mm -hmm. And I don't if, think hey, any, a lot of these athletes and he said are critical of him. Their wives are homemakers. Their wives. No are one. I don't think. The, I think you're obfuscating the the argument here because nobody as a. I don't know. Is anybody out there demeaning people who are staying home, taking care of the family? I don't think that that's a whole I movement. A I don't think that's a, that, that no. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that's be being said. So let me just say that's not being said here. Them. I've never said it. I appreciate any. I think it's more work to stay home and take care of the kids, 
and take care of the home and, than it is, and you don't get enough thanks, period. He said, I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. He said, some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you, the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and your children that you bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she started living her vocation as a wife and a mother. That's not what you're what saying. Is, that's his personal situation with his wife. And he's saying, I'm venturing at a Catholic university. Now, he might be wrong, but he's saying his opinion at a Catholic university is that I'm, I'm guessing most of you want to be homemakers. Now, he might be wrong about that. But that's his opinion. He can't state his opinion. Well, you're, and again, you're he was never, well, no, he so never so deterred. He never it's deterred a, a woman from going out and having. Uh, a but you are saying it's a diabolical lie. Nobody's telling anyone lies. You're giving a commencement speech at a university, a at a college. Student. You're giving a commencement speech to an entire student body, and it's it's weird to me. I mean, I just I just heard an incredible speech that Dr. Daniel Black, where he started here you here 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 you, here they come y'all here they come. And he really inspired all of those young people to walk into their purpose and their selves and the Holy Ghost and all. I mean, it was very, it was a spiritual speech. It had God all throughout it. It didn't denigrate. the. the if I was a young lady sitting in there and have no aspirations to get married or anything, I would, I would feel some ways about having somebody say, you know, I've been lied to, you know, like I'm not smart enough to think for myself. Like it was a very uh, kind of like backhanded speech. And you know, defending it is is interesting. It's a choice, yeah, I, I guess. I, I honestly, I have no problem with it. I don't think it was determined. Okay. My prayer, I raised two daughters. Like I said, they're very successful. We're very academically inclined and smart. And my prayer for them was that they grow up and be women of God first. Now, whether they want to be a lawyer, whether they want to be an accountant, whether they want to be a school teacher or a housewife, what, either, whatever their choice was, I was going to support but my main focus was I want y'all to grow up and be women of God. And so, look, if, if, so you if they're not, if they don't get married, the are they still? Hold on, hold on, Chris. So if they don't get married and have children, are they women of God? Yeah. Can they be women of God? Absolutely. Okay. So, Absolutely. so the marriage and the children doesn't undermine their relationship to no, God. No, 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 not at all. Okay, because that feels like that's what Bucker was saying. I think it's interesting because he, he he also think, I think we're reading into it personally, but yeah. I just I read it. I would say this. I would just throw this out. The Kansas City Chiefs have a player on their team, Rasheed Rice, who was going, I don't know, a hundred something miles an mm -hmm. hour and put all sorts of lives in danger. And no one is trying to get him off the team or out of the NFL. But this guy gives a speech at a conservative Catholic university. Where a lot of belief, the belief things he said were in line okay. with Catholic theology, and he's criticized. Oh, I mean, well, I that's think not that's, well, I think that's we we have to we have to let people have their views in this pluralistic society, and not try to take away somebody's livelihood because they have a religious belief that's different from ours. Or I think there's a couple of things at play here, though, because like when Rasheed Rice does a disciplinary. Um, situation in place already right so like if you commit a criminal infraction the league reviews it there's discipline right. when it comes to like precedent when it comes to stuff people just giving their opinion doesn't really seem to be a precedent or really anything in place that really truly like no but i'm just saying there was Lesha a Kaepernick by like a hundred over a hundred thousand people that petition to get Bucker kicked out of the league, fired from the league. Well, that, well, right. That, yeah, know, that, that's, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's a significant such a good number of people. Right. But it's an unofficial thing, meaning right. the, the NFL does not have to consider that at all. Right. Like um, Rasheed Rice, there will be an investigation. There will be a criminal process uh, like that. Right. So right. like they can lean on that. We see that all the time with people that like hit their spouses and stuff. They always can lean on like, well, there's a there's a system in place and we'll come back to you a year from now and be like, oh, that's four games. However, they measure, you know, four games. But controversy off the field seems to be an arbitrary thing, which is why I think people bring up Kaepernick, because I don't I, I don't think it was Kaepernick sitting necessarily or even the kneeling. That was the problem. It was when he gave the reason for it in his post game. And that's why you never see Michelle Lynch really get in trouble, because in addition to being good, Michelle Lynch was like, I'm not telling y'all anything. 
So <laughs> why am I doing this? Because I don't feel like it. And y'all can't make me do anything. He, that, he got fined because he said I wasn't even going to give post-game press conference talk. So, like, I feel like you can separate him out. It's the it's what will the league punish? What needs to be what rouse up enough people to make people say you need to be out of here? And I, I don't think Bucker's out of here. I don't think he's going to get out of here. I think, you, you, you know, there's people that have done be? and said worse. You think he should be? No, I don't know. I don't think I he don't should think be so. done out of the league at all. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think people, people said and done breathe. worse. People I'm more booing. for they can have signs at the games, whatever. But the yeah, I, I think I'm more for the idea of like, what is it that makes the league react to certain fans' anger? Because there's certain fans when they get angry, it's like, yes. well, y'all just got to get over that. And other fans get angry and it's like, all right, we got to, guys, we got to get this guy out of here. We got to figure something out. Well, I, again, I think it's related to production. If Harrison, if Harrison Butker was not a good kicker, he very well might be cut by the team. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, that, that could happen. Mm-hmm. And like I said, if Kaepernick was still at the height of his career, he would, I think he would have definitely stayed in the league. Mm-hmm. But it's, 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 you know, a backup quarterback. And again, I think he should have been in the league for sure. Right. But I'm just saying the last thing a team wants is their backup quarterback to be such a lightning rod. They I think certain opinions, certain opinions, you need to be unassailable. Like Kaepernick needed to be unassailable. I don't think Bucker needs to be unassailable to keep his job because I think those opinions are in li- in mainstream in line with a lot of stuff the NFL would either stand for or at least not well, have the a NFL problem. NFL released a statement somewhat distancing itself from mm, a Bucker's it, head. Did it yeah. though? It basically said we don't we have three thousand uh players or three whatever the number is and we don't uh we don't monitor whatever here's let me see i have i actually have that on each in a personal capacity yeah it was a personal arena and we don't have anything that you know we can't monitor personal speeches but i mean he talked about biden not trump <laughs> he yeah. talked about the pride mom like oh, yeah, he went we in. He talked agree about. with him yeah I, I don't agree with that stuff we could disagree yeah. with him and stuff but again it shouldn't kick him out of the league like I said, they the in that statement they did say we support diversity and inclusion. Do they? Except well, for no, ownership. That diversity, and, well, that's changing now. I think Except the diversity coaches. and inclusion includes people of all different religions, people mm-hmm. of different races, and they need to obviously get better do, in that for coaches. Do you feel there's an attack on on Christianity? Do you feel like Chris Broussard is here? We got Roderick Morrow. Do you feel like there's an attack on Christianity? It feels it the, the speech gave gave to me that there's somehow some oppression with you know the right way of living and you know in 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 this diversity is the problem. It's the tyranny. He said the tyranny of diversity and I'm like really? It, yeah. Do you feel that way? I feel like a lot of, and it's not even just Christianity, but Christian Orthodox Christian views and ortho on sexuality, as well as Orthodox Muslim and Jewish views. In fact, Buddhist, most of the standard religions are at odds with a lot of what society's pushing today. Now, I think the view should be we're a pluralistic society. And if a Christian has certain views or a Muslim has certain views on marriage, sexuality, whatever it may be, they should be able to have those views. And in their mosques, in their churches, in their synagogues, they should be able to teach and schools. They should be able to teach those views. People that want to LGBT or whatever lifestyle they want should be able to do their thing and live their their, lifestyle. And we have to find a way to respectfully disagree with one another. So that's what I I think, but I think there's this push for not tolerance, but applause. And so mm. I think people wanting Christians or Muslims or Jews to applaud certain lifestyles that are in at odds with their faith. That's where I think people feel like, well, look, I, I, I can live beside you and respect you. We can be friends and stuff, but I, I don't agree with your views based on my religion. And don't try to make me agree with your views. I think I was settled for like them not banning books and going at people in public schools. Cause like there are some places where I feel like there's overreach where you can have your own personal 
something in your house, in your church or whatever, but taking it into the public square and being like, now these are my rules. They're going to be rules too. Especially in America, because we definitely not you, you're breaking up. You're breaking up, like, Roderick. I don't know oh, why you're, sorry. you're, you're into that. I mean, I don't think you can control 5G, but uh, I think you were saying, different, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I, you I was trying. I, am I still breaking up? Um, no, you're good. Still now, breaking you're good up? Now. I don't know. What okay. You, um, up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, the it would be cool if in the public square it was just here's my personal beliefs and I live by that set of rules. But once it gets to, we're going to ban every book that mentions LGBTQ people. We're going to say stuff like DEI is somehow also a religious issue, which I don't know how, well, I, that, I really you sure know what I'm saying? So like yeah. there's an overreach and I think you're seeing people push back to the overreach because it's not necessarily just if I think if it was what you said, Chris, and people lived in that way, I can't change your heart and mind. Yeah. So you, you get to decide in your house, how you going to do your thing. But I think, what you're seeing people push back against, especially when it's becoming like a political empowerment to the to it. It's no longer just it's my opinion. It's it's my opinion. And also, you can't do this and you better not learn about that. And that's why I but think I you're getting say, a lot of I anger. think the overreach is on is like the LGBTQ. Look, live your do you be how you want to be. But I don't you don't necessarily need to teach that to young children in the school. And I'm not even talking about just that, but sexuality in general. I think they're teaching sex. Let the parents teach about the sexuality. If you want to teach about sexuality in school, teach it biologically as far as how it what, what, what does that it, look like? What is that? Like the, the zygote, the sperm enters the womb. Well, you teach you about show, the you're going to show how that happens. The biological aspects of sex. Let the families teach about the okay. different morality or views they want with sex. We got a minute before we got to go. Uh, Roderick Morrow was here. Chris Broussard, just before I let you go, Trump or Biden? <laughs> Neither is getting my support. Real talk. Oh, I'm, my God. Just, 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 no. Oh, my God. Fuck you God <laughs> Oh, you, you strong oh, Biden? We... <laughs> you strong I, I support, Biden? I support democracy, rights, um, okay. life. Like Not breathing, breathing, the breathing, Mass breathing, incarceration. Ma no, uh, that he, he put a lot of, he, he destroyed a lot no, of black it, families. I'm sorry, no. no I'm not, I'm is, not you know? pro Trump. No, absolutely pro, not. not pro you Trump, sound pro Trump, but I ain't pro uh, Biden either. Yeah. Uh, Come on, man. Oh, man. Okay. Beyond the racial stuff, he's not oh. even equipped to be the president. Yo. Is he mentally equipped to be president? Oh, my God. We oh get two. God. We get two choices, and I think yeah. of the two we get choices. More than two choices, actually. No, we don't. Not right, not, we come back, not coming up why. November. I promise. One of the two of them will be president, Chris. And if that's wrong, if I'm wrong, you can come back and tell me I was wrong. Either okay, it's sad that. that we those are only two choices. It's sad, Yo. but you got you got to oh, do what we got to right. do, bro. Not Ooh, I me. shouldn't have said hello to you in South Orange. All right, I love you though. <laughs> All right, Chris Broussard, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh no, so have me on again hey, if you want. On. Maybe we can have We're gonna have you on November 6th. Chris Broussard, check him out. Fox yeah, Sports, uh, Odd Couple, seven o'clock.